Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Brandon Lucky, writer, director, actor, editor, and filmmaker. The film you're about to see is entitled Pierre Curie, a biography. I hope you enjoy it. Pierre Curie was born on May 15th in the year 1859, four years after his brother Jacques in 1855. He was born to Sophie Claire and Dr. Eugene Curie. While growing up, Pierre was homeschooled by his father and mother. During the Franco-Prussian War, he and his brother Jacques aided their father, a medical doctor, in treating French revolutionaries who had been badly wounded. As he neared the end of his schooling, Pierre became the pupil of Professor Albert Lezio. After completing his schooling, he took up an interest in the naturally occurring symmetry of things such as flower petals, seashells, and eventually crystals. At the age of 16, Pierre went on to study at the Sorbonne in Paris, France. While there, he earned a degree in physics by the age of 18. Upon completion of his degree, Pierre became a lab assistant. He went on to begin a working relationship with his brother and good friend Jacques, who studied at the Sorbonne during this time as well. For six years, they continued a successful working relationship, studying the symmetry of crystals. They eventually hypothesized that when mechanical pressure is applied to a crystal, an electric charge would be produced. They eventually proved their theory and named the resulting form of energy phytoelectricity which would find applications for everything from radio broadcasting to development of sonar equipment to use in balances and would eventually prove useful in Pierre's later work with radiation. As we see, piezoelectricity is caused when mechanical pressure is applied to the exterior of a crystal. This compresses the structure and thus causes the crystal to give off an electric current. After the brothers had discovered this form of electricity, Jacques moved away to the city of Montpierre to take a teaching job and get married. However, the two brothers would remain good friends for the rest of their lives. After Jacques' departure, Pierre continued to study the symmetry of crystals and discovered what has come to be known as Curie's Law of Symmetry, which states that different crystal structures and asymmetries contribute to abnormalities in a crystal's response to stress or stimuli. Pierre then found interest in the newly emerging field of magnetism. He researched the possibility that different temperatures would affect the magnetism of certain substances. This became the topic of his dissertation, which he worked on under the supervision of the Sorbonne. After his work with crystal symmetry and during his work with magnetism, he caught the eye of well-known Scottish scientist Lord Kelvin. Kelvin had similar ideas as Pierre and Jacques, but had published his own studies on piezoelectricity after the Curie brothers. Kelvin invited Pierre to come and discuss this phenomenon and from there on, the two remained good friends. While beginning work on his dissertation, Pierre was introduced to a young woman named Marie. They were introduced by a mutual friend named Joseph Kowalski. The two had an instant attraction to one another and eventually developed a friendship. At this time, Pierre was working at the Paris School for Physics and Chemistry, and Marie was studying at the University of Paris. They both shared an interest in the magnetic properties of certain elements. Pierre displayed a certain affection for Marie and soon found himself in love with her. It was only after she had taken a trip back to her homeland of Poland that he decided they should be together. He soon asked her to marry him and at first she said no, but eventually she said yes and the two were happily married. After being married, the Curies were granted a laboratory to do their research in. They soon took an interest in a substance called pitch blend. It's an ore from which uranium is derived. But the Curies, however, hypothesized that there had to be other substances in the ore than just lead and uranium. They eventually discovered the existence of small amounts of a substance they called polonium, which they named after Mary's homeland of Poland. They then went on to do more research on the ore, hypothesizing that there was another element in it which, if it existed, they were going to call radium. They obtained large amounts of the ore pitch blend and set to work. 
Each batch was ground, dissolved, filtered, precipitated, collected, redissolved, crystallized, and recrystallized. In all, it took them four years, researching, experimenting, braving the cold dead of winter and the scorching heat of summer to have their dreams realized. Eventually, all of the pitch blend was reduced to several small test tubes and bowls. When the water had finally evaporated from all the vials, bowls, and tubes, there was very little to be found in the containers. But, whenever the lights were turned off, their newly found substance glowed a light blue. They had finally discovered radium. After having made their discovery, they accepted the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1903, along with fellow researcher Henry Becquerel. They stated their findings on radioactivity, the discovery of radium, and the discovery of polonium, which had been named to incite political awareness of the fact that Poland was partitioned between three other countries. After they won the Nobel Prize, they continued their studies on polonium and radium, eventually proving their atomic mass. However, like many scientists of the time, they turned their attention to spiritualism and eventually set out to validate the medium Eusapia Palladina. But in 1906, tragedy struck. While on his way home, Pierre was struck by a carriage. He died instantly. Would Marie, left to tend to their own children as well as pursue her dreams in science, be able to make it on her own? Yes, Marie would raise their two children and continue her studies of radiation. She would later be granted the 1911 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her extensive work on the elements radium and polonium. Well, I hope you enjoyed the film that you've just seen. It took about a month to shoot and had a cast of about seven people. Uh, a lot of them you didn't see in this picture because I've had to condense it down quite a bit for the project that's due. Now, here in about a month, we're going to have a special edition coming out which is going to have the full-length feature film. I hope you get to see it.